Hey there, people of the internet! My name is Sivana, and welcome to my studio! This week's video is a very special one, not just because it's the longest that I've done so far, but because there's just so much packed into this piece. It was a passion project like no other I've ever done before, and it really means a lot to me. So for the basic premise, it's two of my characters, from a story I've been writing for a while, thrown into the Alice in Wonderland aesthetic, and of course, thrown down the rabbit hole. Now let's get into the drawing. So I don't have the recording for the sketches of this magnificent mess because it was about 8 to 10 hours on its own and as you can see I gave myself a lot of work to do. And I decided to just start out with the line art. However, that was also 20 hours of recording so I have it split up into some of the main parts starting with the famous Cheshire Cat. Oh Cheshire Cat, it's you! Um, did you expect the white rabbit perchance? Now, since this is a combination of the Alice in Wonderland aesthetic and my story, I wanted to add as many elements of both as possible. My story is based on my nightmares, so it's supposed to be pretty scary and unsettling. And in a couple of my nightmares over the many years I've been alive, there have been a couple of cats that have been guiding me somewhere, but not always to a nice place. So in my story, there are two cats, the Cat of Chaos, which I found was perfect for the Cheshire Cat here, and the Cat of Reason, that I do not have depicted in this piece. So with making the Cheshire Cat a being of chaos, I wanted him to just look horrifying and kind of mangled, so instead of phasing out of existence, he's being like cut apart. Pretty dark, I know, but that's the whole idea. And of course I have the White Rabbit and his pocket watch, who is always running late. But by the looks of this knife pointed at his belly, I'd say it's too late for him. He really has no significance to my story, but how could I not add the White Rabbit? He's basically an Alice in Wonderland staple. In the theme of the rabbit hole, with all of this stuff flying down and around, I decided to add some complex furniture, like this beautiful clock that is my favorite part of this whole project, and I'm really proud of myself for how it turned out. I also added all these floating eyes because they play a big role in my nightmare story, like my character is always being watched and judged by some omnipotent force. Plus they're creepy, and I like them. There's also tons of roses scattered all over, both will be red and white, as well as several other recognizable elements from the Alice in Wonderland story. Now for my characters! First we have Bill, who is just perfect as the Mad Hatter, because I often draw him with a top hat. And he's not a being from my nightmares, but he is a character I decided to incorporate into the story because he is just really fun to me. He also usually is drawn with a lollipop head. And when I created him, way before the conception of this story, he was the Lollipop King of Wonderland, so it just fits really nicely. He is also pretty chaotic, but for the most part he is a safe haven in the story, away from all the monsters of my bad dreams. But his kindness and pleasantness may be too good to be true. I mean, can you really trust someone this pretty? And this is Vine, the main character, and a personification of my teenage self going through all of these nightmares. She doesn't really trust Bill and tries to keep her distance, though that is not the case here. I wanted them to be close, maybe as if she started falling and he caught her, or maybe he pulled her in and she's using her scissors to keep him at bay. Either way, I wanted her to be looking directly out at whoever was looking in, as a kind of fourth wall break. She knows she's in a nightmare, and she's trying desperately to get out. I usually have her hair in pigtails, but that didn't seem to fit the Alice aesthetic, and I also couldn't figure out how to make it work for this pose. Bill's fashion is so fun for me to draw because he's just always in these pretty eccentric suits and for this piece I decided to give him some taller heels than normal and because I just really like these shoes, I don't know what these kinds of shoes are called, but they look really nice and like they're feminine, but he works it. He's so chic.
I went for a more Lolita vibe for Vine's dress, so she too could be fashionable. And I just really wanted to add a lot of frills and those cute little like wrist and ankle cuffs. And if it show if this piece showed more of her neck, she would definitely have a frilly choker too. And now here is the full view of the line work so you can see why it took me so long to do all of these little pieces of detail. I wanted to add as many elements as I could without it being overwhelming and I think I nailed it. Let's see, you got the weird directional signs, the books with some of the illustrations from the original book, tons of cards flying all over the place, cookies and drinks that might change your size, and all the rest. I was very ambitious with this project and oh boy did it take a lot out of me, but I'm really happy with it and we're not even done yet. I forgot to record myself flatting in all the colors, so here's just a little montage of me cleaning them up a little before I get into the real meat and potatoes of this video, which is shading and highlights. Also, Bill is a watermelon flavored lollipop, so his colors are pink and green. Dang, that lamp is satisfying. I love lamp. I love lamp. And now back to the cat that I spend a whole lot of time on, but for good reason. The Cheshire Cat is important, and I really wanted to try my hand at making it look more furry and less like a flat drawing. Basically all I did was use my normal line art brush and just did a lot of little swashes so that I could use my scratchy bristle kind of blender uh, that I use for hair to make it look like layered fur. I do this for the stripe pattern, shading, and highlights, as well as the firelight. I think it gives them a real nice texture. Oh yeah, then I learned how to make a glow effect by using big, low opacity brushes. And I kind of bounce all over the place doing this for every single candle, so then I know where my light sources are coming from. I also found these cool flame brushes for free from Brashizi, and spent a little while before adding the glow to go through them and give each candle a unique flame. Doing this lamp light was really cool because I just did what I learned from the glow tutorial and then cut around the parts to make it look like the light was only shining from the top and bottom of the lampshade, but also as well as glowing through it. I love this lamp. I love lamp. Now back to the evil kitty for a sec before I go work on the rabbit, which was much less effort. I decided to add these orange lights on just about everything because the flames give off a nice warm glow and glisten on things like fur and hair and solid surfaces really well. I also wanted to show the shine and the gleam of the eyes for the cat and the rabbit. And I'm really only using these two kind of blenders for this whole thing. The scratchy hairbrush one, the bristle smudge, and the softer blender, which is the real watercolor blender, that kind of looks like a sponge is just smudging the colors around. I use these two a lot. <laughs> Thank you. 
I also really like doing the little details in the eyes. It's different from everything else I do, so I might stick with it. For shading Bill's face, I wanted to give him that ominous kind of shadow over his eyes, like they do in anime sometimes. Like he may look nice and sweet and all smiley right here, but you don't know his true intentions, and that can be dangerous. So I do the same thing that I did for the cat and made a bunch of scratchy lines where I feel the shading would look best and block in the darkest parts. I think the pink highlights on Vine really make it pop. Shading for Bill's hair was a bit less and was kind of weird because I sampled the normal hair color and then put it on the multiply layer, but it didn't really make it dark enough, so that's why I go in with a bit of a darker color on top. Now here I add this orange glow to everything else, starting with the roses, and I just wanted to do this all at the same time to keep the firelight color consistent without having to keep resampling it, which turned out to be kind of annoying and jumpy, but I hope it's not too bad. But again, this clock is my favorite, and it just keeps getting better. So by this point, I have way too many things and way too many layers to deal with, so my computer and Photoshop were kind of lagging, and the best way I found to deal with that was to just hide some of the layers and work on a few things at a time, so layers will go away and come back quite a bit for the rest of the video. Doing these details for all of the eyes does look really nice and was fun, but being sped up to times 50 like the rest of the video was the real nightmare. So we had to slow this section down to times 25 so that you can even see what the heck is going on. I keep saying the clock is my favorite, and that is still true, but I do really love how these two turned out, and doing all the shading for Bill was just so much fun. It was a bit less fun for Vine's dress though. I really didn't know where to put the shadows and highlights on the skirt part because it was just a strange angle and I struggled with it for a little while. I still think it turned out nice though. The pants, though, looking fresh as hell. There it is. 
So I used several different brushes and blenders for the clothes to get a multi-layered shading look, especially on Bill's jacket. Gosh, Gosh. dang, he looks so good. Bill's hat gave me a bit of trouble as I tried to figure out how the light of the candles on top would affect the rest of it. I did a bit of experimenting with the shading and highlights, and even used the eraser tool to help guide where I thought it would be best to blend and have the shadows like on all the crinkles and the brim, and especially all the stuff that's on his hat like the rose and the clock. It just... it was a weird angle that I had to, <laughs> to figure out for the lights, um, but I think it looks good. Now, you might be thinking that scissors are a weird choice for a weapon, and you might be right. I don't have some cool or clever reason for having them in the story other than I thought it would be unique. And you know, since Vine is always running around and having to fight off monsters, she uses all kinds of miscellaneous weapons to defend herself, so it does kind of make sense, but mostly I just like the way they look. The miscellaneous weapons idea is also why there are knives all over the piece with one pointed at the Cheshire Cat's throat because the Cat of Chaos is a threat, one pointed at the rabbit's belly to signify an imminent danger, and one pointed at Bill's face because he may or may not be a threat, but we definitely don't want him around Vine. I didn't really know how to shade or detail these wooden signs, so I just did it as simply as possible, using a low opacity airbrush over it, as well as putting lines of shading and highlights around the letters to look like they're actually carved. This chair was a lot of fun to draw, color, and shade, and all I had to do was Google Victorian armchair to find a good reference picture. Same with the oil lantern, the fancy lamp, and my beloved grandfather clock. Google and Pinterest are my go-tos for reference pictures. I want to give some background into why I started this story, and in turn, this whole project. Basically, ever since I was four years old, I've had very vivid nightmares, and they're also the dreams I remember the most about. The first dream or nightmare I ever even remember having was when I was four, and so that's how this story starts. And in middle school, I started having even weirder dreams and even scarier nightmares, so I began to write them down because I thought they were interesting. They didn't, like, horrify me to the point where I didn't want to go to sleep anymore, and I was traumatized by them. I was scared in the moment of having them while I was asleep, but when I woke up, I always found them interesting and I would think about them and be like, what the heck even just happened there? And in high school, when my depression got worse, I started seeing a therapist and a school counselor, who both told me to write down my dreams as soon as I woke up from them. So I did that for a while, and I also wrote down some of my nightmares from my childhood that I still remembered very vividly. 
So with all of these journals and pages of dreams and nightmares, I figured I could turn them into something. It was also a way of coping and trying to deal with my depression as I got older. I started this story about four or five years ago, and I originally wanted it to be a game, I still kind of do, where you play as Vine, who is me, going through all of these horrific places and scenarios, trying to find clues to piece together a lost memory, or a better way to cope with all of these dark thoughts. I wanted the game to be like Until Dawn, Life is Strange, and Little Nightmares, where it's story-driven with collectibles and puzzles and all sorts of secrets, and even a way to combat the nightmare monsters. Lately though, I've started making it into a comic, and hopefully I can get something done so I can start putting it on Webtoon, maybe next year if I keep at it. Anyway, that was a long way to say that this project means so much to me, and there are parallels with my story and Alice in Wonderland. You're in this weird, crazy, mad world and all you want to do is go home, back to normal, but you just keep running around alone and afraid of what you don't understand. Thank you all so much for watching. I love this piece, and I made it with the intent of it being a poster, like a little promotional thing for when my comic eventually comes out. And so once I was finally done, I found this really cool site called Printful, and they made it into a poster for me. I was honestly intending for it to be bigger, but I really do like this size, and the print is just so nice and all of the lines and colors, everything that I put so much work into these past couple months really shows well in this nice, clean, crisp print. I also have a limited stock up on my Etsy shop if you would like to have one of these bad boys for yourself, and if I sell out, I can always add more. Be sure to hit that like button! Subscribe and hit the bell to be notified about new videos, and leave a comment on what you think of this piece, as well as any suggestions for what you would like me to draw in the future. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.